Hey, how are you doing? So, what I'm doing right now is I'm setting up my oil palette. Uh, one of the reasons why you can see that we use cardboard is because when we're opening up a brand new tube of oil paint and it's full of oil, it's good to have the cardboard to absorb it. So that's part of the reason why I listed the oil colors that we're going to be using. And I'll talk about the tool, the tools that I use and the surface that I'm going to be working on. So you can kind of, you can see on the video, um, I'm applying the oil paint in small areas and then I'm going to use the brush to diffuse it. So right now, because oil is relatively slow drying, I'm going to start out by applying it sort of uh, in places that I think that the armor would get worn and where I've already done the chipping previous. So I'm going to enhance those areas. This initial coat was supposed to be like a dusty layer. I did do about two or three different layers on the legs. And if you were to do this across a bunch of minis, you may or may not want to include all the steps. And everything I do, you know, it's kind of just mostly for demonstrative purposes and to give people ideas. Uh, unfortunately, when I paint, I don't necessarily have one way that I do things. And, you know, for good or for bad, that's sort of the way I do it. But uh, when I started this a long time ago, I sort of wanted to just give kind of like a rough template so that people could use. So some of the tools are I'm using the ultra, uh, the low corneal ultra round 7020s number two it's a golden tacklon brush so it's a synthetic uh, they hold their tip relatively well you can see the ones in the video i've been using those for about two or three years two years maybe uh, i've done you know i've done plenty of work with them um, i don't i don't do it a lot but i do i've done it enough to have had them curl up on me because anybody who's ever used a synthetic brush in the world knows that they last for about five minutes before the hook the tip starts to hook so these don't really develop that much of a hook, which is nice. And um, they are resistant to chemicals and they're resistant to oils and you can kind of rinse them out and reuse them. Uh, there are those who have like one brush per color. Uh, I tend to work with, you know, darker colors. It might speed things up, to be honest with you, because you have so long to work with the oil paint. But uh, I only have, I have one color brush and I have one blender. So you could probably, you know, you could have uh, more than one color brush. It, it might speed things up, it might not. For me, I sort of, you know, if I was doing it at a long time uh, or, or over a, a, a big group, um, I would, uh, you know, I'd reconsider. Um, so again, like I said, it's just, these are all, this is all just thought experiments and, and sort of experimentation what I'm doing. Um, so I talked about the brush. The thinner that I'm using is at different points in this video, um, in the initial part, and for the most part, I use Weber uh, Odorless Terpenoid. It's the, there's two of them. I use the one that's in the blue can, the blue and white can. It's clear. It doesn't have a strong odor. I think it's some sort of petroleum distillate. It's relatively um, pure, relatively um, uh, mild. As far as solvents go, they usually, when people talk about solvents, they talk about this one's hotter than this one. It's probably the least hot out of all of the solvents that I've used for this technique. Uh, in later parts of the video, I use um, Home Depot Clean Strip Odorless Mineral Spirit, which actually works fine, and it tends to be a teeny weeny bit hotter. So like on oil paint that I've been sitting, has been sitting out for a couple days, the Weber Terpenoid, the stuff that I'm using right here, will not break it down. I won't be able to break through the skin and reuse the oil paint because oil paint, when you leave it on the palette, it kind of forms like a little bit of the skin. This stuff does not have uh, the, the aggressive quality of the Home Depot uh, odorless mineral spirit or terpenoid. Now, part of the reason, like I'd say like, uh, maybe 30% of the reason why I even did this video is because people um, have some kind of um, 
trepidation about using oil paints over an acrylic base coat, I can tell you without varnishing. I can tell you that that's part of the reason why I did this. When I was doing this, um, you know, throughout the time I've done it, I mean, literally every time I bring out the oil paint, people are like, do I need to varnish? Because I don't know, you know, I mean, I think there's other people who have kind of given uh, the community at large that idea. There are times that you want to. There are certain solvents that are kind of aggressive. What I can tell you is only from my experience. So in this video, I'm using oil paint, artist quality. Uh, that's the artist quality isn't important, but I'm using artist quality oil paints with uh, either a safflower oil base, a walnut oil base. I don't think I have any walnut oils or linseed oil base. And then I'm using the odorless terpenoid. I can tell you that the odorless terpenoid and the oil paints do not eat through the acrylic paint. That's one of the that's one of the benefits of using it is you go fat over lean. So I'm going fat over lean, oils over acrylics. The acrylics have dried. I put them on with an airbrush. These are Vallejo acrylics uh, that I'm using the oil paint over and it's not varnished. Um, part of the reason that I don't varnish it is because I want to maintain the surface that I have after I've done my airbrushing. I airbrushed it on kind of dusty, which is kind of a talk for another time, but I wanted to get a bit of texture on the surface. So the oil paint is going to eat, or not eat, but dig into the texture of the acrylic paint. So I want that. I want kind of that matte uh, to satin surface here. Okay, so if you watch what I'm doing, um, I'm still just, I don't know if I've started to work in the oil paint. It looks like I'm still adding it. I'm starting to use uh, burnt sienna. And I'm not sure if I realized at a certain point that I was just going to, you know, need to condense things or what, because I envisioned, you know, oh, okay, now I'm bringing out the blender. This is, uh, I show the brush briefly, you can pause it, but again, it's the uh, low corneal 70-20 ultra round. So the brush, you can see there is slightly damp with thinner. And I'm going to start to work the uh, oils that I put in into the surface. Uh, you don't want it to be too wet, because if it's too wet, then you're just going to wipe away the oil. And you can see how I'm using it. Um, just kind of tapping it, working it in, diffusing the oil paint. Oh, I bumped it around, and uh, that's really all there is to it. Part of the part of the uh, art to this is to sort of be able to kind of like look at it, uh, pull back, and be like, okay, where am I at? You know, am I have I gone a little bit too hard? Have I uh, not done enough? And typically. Uh, it's better to do, you know, not enough because, you know, I'm guilty of it too. I'm just like, hey, this looks great. You know, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't a hundred chips be better than just 15 or <laughs> wouldn't a ton of uh, grime be better than just a, a little speck here in the corner? And so all I'm trying to do is to emphasize the contours to kind of put the oil paint into the crevices and just kind of um, draw out the features of the model and add weathering too. So we're trying to do double duty. We're trying to uh, do what most people would use a wash for, which is to um, enhance the volumes, draw out the different surfaces, and we also want to uh, weather those surfaces. So that's, you know, that's part of the art and it's part of the fun is to sort of Find, ride that fine line, you know, ride the razor's edge and find where it looks cool, but it's not, it hasn't gone too far yet. So it's always, you know, it's always uh, a little game we play. And this is, you know, something that you can do without having to go to a lot of uh, different colors. Uh, the colors I'm using, I showed in the video, but the ones that it might go to colors are Naples yellow, uh, light, and raw umber. Those two colors together is where I start. That's usually I apply like a lighter kind of dustyish layer around the boots. And that's where I start as I start on the feet. Because the feet are gonna experience more wear and tear. They're, you know, they're kind of what's carrying the, the guy throughout the battlefield. So, and it's also 
the stakes are a little bit lower. So I start on the feet, I start working up throughout the figure and I, and I, you know, I start lightly on the weathering and then I start, I kind of begin adding more as I go. I didn't show it in this video. It's on another video on my channel, but I start also before this, you know, we do the painting and we do the chipping. The chipping can sort of help you uh, locate where you're going to be putting the heaviest of your weathering. That's part of what it's used for. Uh, it's used as the map from which to begin. That's a phrase that Michael Rinaldi uses. He says that the chipping creates this road map that we sort of like we start to follow. And then as you begin to lay on the grime and the weathering, you sort of, you know, maybe a narrative emerges in your mind that you're going to uh, tell. And that's really, that's like, for most people, that's like the, the highest nirvana level is when, you, when you're storytelling with your miniature. All right, so this is the, the streak, and I wanted to make sure that I caught it uh, on video. So I've started, I think I, I got the burnt sienna on there and then I was like, wait, I need to be filming this, which frequently happens. Let me tell you, I'm just like, <laughs> I start doing something then I realize I need to be having it on camera. So I'm drawing it down. I just put a, just a small amount. Yeah, I think I mixed it with Naples yellow light because it looks a little bit lighter to me. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating like the background or the backdrop for the central darker streak. So it just kind of adds like that sense of depth, that sense of realism to the streak. And as I draw it down, you know, that's really, I mean, that's all there is to it. And it does take practice though. Like initially when I started and you can kind of move the streak back and forth. Uh, you'll see what I mean if you start doing it. You can use too much paint. Um, you can kind of make it so that it doesn't look quite like maybe uh, the way you want it. So something that you can do in here I'm putting on, I think this is raw umber mixed with burnt sienna. I'm going to be drawing the darker central streak down the center. Uh, yeah, that's what's going on. So what I was going to say is you can get yourself some plastic card and you can cut yourself squares. You can paint it however you want. Like maybe you wanted to paint it like a uh, rusty wall in um, a burnt out city. In, somewhere in, in Ontario or somewhere in you know the galaxy and you can start to practicing uh, practice these streaks so I'm drawing down the raw umber I'm trying to keep it in the middle and really like um, doing this one after another if I do the lighter one first and then the darker one it's going to uh, these these have the possibility of blending together so if you wanted to make sure that you get a nice sharp uh, central uh, darker streak you could wait for the orange to dry for the for the burnt sienna on the the lighter part to dry which you know when it comes to oil paint you want to wait about uh, 24 hours uh, but I didn't want to I was all fired up so I was just like ah, I'm gonna throw that raw umber in there anyhow so to practice you can get yourself some plastic card cut out like a three by five or a five by eight and then start to uh, draw draw in your streaks you could do other weathering effects on that piece of uh, on that piece of plastic card. It's something that uh, professional modelers do. I, I started, uh, I made a couple panels myself because there was a few things that I wanted to sort of check out. I wanted to try a different type of chipping. I wanted to do just whatever, you know, maybe flick a little mud on it. Uh, I was practicing my mud specs and you can do that with your a practice card it's you know and, and it's kind of fun it's like therapeutic the stakes are low there's not really any uh any risk to it so yeah i'm i'm uh i'm adding in a little burnt umber i'm drawing in another streak and uh yeah not not too shabby on that one got lucky <laughs> Thank you. 
watch it if you made it this far. And uh, if you have any ideas or suggestions, I'd like to hear them if you have any comments. And we also like to hear them. I'll be painting. Keep painting. Keep believing. Keep